this is a 12 volt relay and this is a PCB mounting type relay and I have already added the flyback diode into this relay. When an inductor is switched very rapidly then back EMF will generate. This flyback diode will give a free path to the back EMF. If you are not giving this flyback diode either the coil or the uh, switching transistor or MOSFET that junction will be burned off because of this high EMF. Flyback diodes are connected across the coil and also in the reverse polarity. Let's look into the pin details of the relay. These two are coils coil terminals and this one is the common terminal and this is normally open and this is normally closed. There is no connection between the coil and the other three terminals. Today we are going to make a simple flasher using this relay. We will add one more component to it to make it perfectly working. These capacitors we will be using uh, for this flashing use unit. This is a 470 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and this one is 220 microfarad capacitor. Don't worry about the size difference. That is because 470 microfarad is uh, having only 25 volt and 220 microfarad is having 63 volt. That is why the low value is having bigger size. And this one is 2200 microfarad 25 volt. We will connect these capacitors one by one and will show you the difference. The load we are giving to this flashing circuit is this 12 volt 20 watt LED bulb. We don't need to give any current limiting resistors because it is already connected in this LED bulb. You can even connect a 12 volt filament bulb as the load into this circuit. We don't need a PCB for assembling this circuit. We can directly solder the wires into the relay terminals. First I am soldering the load to the relay terminals. Here since I am using an LED bulb, there is polarity to this wire. Red wire is the positive terminal of the load and orange wire is the negative terminal of this load. If you are using a 12 volt filament bulb, then you don't need to worry about the polarity of the terminals. This is very simple and very much understandable connection. What I am doing is I have connected one terminal of the coil to the normally closed terminal of the relay. And I am going to solder the positive terminal of the load to the same normally closed terminal of the relay. For the time being, I have not connected any capacitors to the circuit. Before that, we will test this circuit without the capacitor. I am giving a 12 volt power supply to this circuit. Please uh, note that I have not connected any other components to this circuit other than flyback diode. When I am connecting the power supply, please listen to the sound of the relay carefully and also please watch the load. This is flickering at a very high frequency. This is because the positive supply is given to the coil through the normally closed terminal of the relay. 
positive supply is given to the common terminal of the relay the moment we connect the power supply the coil en energizes and common terminal will be released from nc and will connect to no that is normally open this will de-energize the relay and again coil gets connected to positive supply and uh, again energizes and this cycle continues we will connect this 470 microfarad capacitor across the coil so when the coil gets disconnected from the su positive supply this capacitor discharges and keep the coil energized for some time when the capacitor discharges completely then the coil gets de-energized Now I have connected the 470 microfarad capacitor across the coil. Again I am powering the circuit. Let's see how this works. Here when we connect the power supply the capacitor gets charged and when it de-energizes the capacitor will discharge the, its charge to the coil to keep it energized for some time. Now I am going to increase the value of the capacitor. Now we have used 470 microfarad. Now I will connect this 220 microfarad capacitor parallel to the 470 microfarad capacitor. Since we are connecting the capacitors in parallel, the capacitance will increase. Before that, let's see the circuit diagram. Here I have used a 220 microfarad capacitor. Uh, you can change this value according to your wish. You might be wondering why this lengthy video for this small circuit. That is because I am explaining everything. I have parallelly connected this capacitor. Let's power this circuit once again. The frequency of the flickering has reduced. Now I will attach this 2200 microfarad capacitor along with the existing capacitor. I am not soldering this capacitor to the existing one. Instead of that I am just holding the capacitor using my hand and will touch the terminals to the capacit existing capacitor terminals. You can even try using a 4700 microfarad capacitor. The flickering has even reduced much. Now you have understood the influence of this capacitor in this flickering circuit. If you are asking me whether this is a good circuit, I will definitely answer no. That, that is because we cannot control the on period and off period of this flickering circuit. If any of the time period is controllable, then I will definitely tell it as somewhat it, it, it is a good circuit. But here we cannot control even the on period and off period. So that is why I am telling that this circuit is not good. If you believe that this video was helpful, then please click like button and also share this to your friends. Please subscribe to my channel for getting more videos like this. That will be an encouragement to me for making more things like this to you. This is Tech Insert signing off. See you in another video. Till then, goodbye and please take care.